Hey y'all, welcome to another WordPress Wednesday. My name is Corey Ashton and I am going to be continuing my series on the slider revolution or the rev slider 5.0. I'm actually in the version 5.1 already. So if you missed out on my first video that I did in this series that kind of gives you an overall explanation of the slider revolution 5.0 and beyond, uh, I'll put the link right here for you to go check that out. But today we're actually gonna talk about the individual slider settings. So not the layers inside of each slide, but the slider uh, individual slide settings itself. So as we go in and look, I've already installed, um, of course, installed the Revolution slider and I've created one slide. And these are the settings here that affect this individual slide. So I'm not gonna be talking about the layers down here. I'm gonna be talking about the overall experience um, that this particular one slide itself, individual slide, can have. The different transitions it can have, the different individual settings, the different individual sources that we can even pull from to create this slide itself. So that's what these tabs are across here. And then of course, under the main tab, we're gonna see some different options and under general, all of these are gonna have their own things. So let's uh, just kind of briefly walk through what these look like. Very commonly, uh, the, the, the slide itself could have a, just a major background image like you see here and then we begin to add layers on with text or other images um, easily there. If you wanted to have an external option uh, for an image, you could do that as well. This opens up uh, a blank uh, spot here. You would go out to um, somewhere else, source an image, you know, you would just um, view the image, you would grab the, the path where the image sits, which is up above it in the uh, URL section here. Let me slide down so you can see it. it would be up here. You would grab that URL, copy it on your clipboard, come into your rev slider and just paste it. And now you can see that that picture would be sitting back here uh, and, and sourced for you. You can do it that route. You can just start with a fully transparent slide and then begin to add your layers that way. Um, or you can start with a solid color, whatever color you would like to set as the background of your slideshow and then begin to add layers. You can also use a video option from YouTube, um, Vimeo, or uh, one from your actual server. So I would recommend though, if you're using one from your server for it to be very small size so that it loads quickly. But in order to use a, a YouTube video, you would just pop over to YouTube. Um, you would again go up to the top URL. So let me slide down here where you can see that. You would go up here and grab this extension here, which is the video ID number. Uh, you would copy that on your clipboard and you would come back in here into the rev slider and paste it. And then of course, um, you're still seeing this image here because there's now a cover picture laid on top of that, this cover image. And you can of course uh, change that if you would like. However, I'm gonna save this slide really quickly and show you a preview. You'll see that image come up first and then instantly transition into my video and it will begin to play here. So that's pretty cool. You can use any of those options here uh, for uh, your settings. Of course, source settings here as well. Um, sorry about that, my ringer is ringing off the hook. Um, image source here, you can do uh, options here for where you want to have your source settings for the um, main image slider there. Uh, you can add, you just ask it to be original size or choose a different size as well if you'd like. Um, how do you want it to sit? Uh, do you want it to sit, uh, cover the whole screen, uh, contain the whole thing? Just play around with these settings. You'll find out different opportunities uh, that each one can affect. Um, parallax, if you went ahead and set the parallax, you just read here, this says that we've already deactivated overall for this entire slideshow. So that would be back inside of your global uh, slider settings. Uh, you would go up here to this area and go change that if you wanted to use the parallax. And of course, McKen Burns, if you wanted to have that opportunity, which is super cool, you would just turn it on here and begin to walk through these different options on how the movement would happen. And I'll do a full video on just the Ken, Ken Burns option, which is super popular and super cool. Um, so let's move on to the uh, general settings tab. Uh, this is just something here. Again, what's cool about this that Theme Punch did for us is even though there are so many options, they typically give us some sort of a note um, that allows us to just read and see what these option fields are. So slide delay, a new delay value for the slide. If no delay is defined per slide, then the slide defined uh, via options will be used. So if you needed any sort of delay, you can add in a time here and they're giving you an example of what that looks like over here. 
do you want to publish this or is it unpublished? So uh, obviously we want to be using this so it's going to be published. This is something really cool though, this visible from and visible until. This is an option for you basically if you were running some sort of an events or some sort of slide that would be date sensitive. Um, let's say we've got Christmas coming up, right? So let's say you have some sort of a, a Christmas slide in there. And of course, the day after Christmas, maybe you want to have New Year's pop up instead of your Christmas slide. You can have uh, set the dates for a slide to be visible from and until and allow those to dynamically appear and disappear. Isn't that such a cool setting? These guys really kind of just overwhelm us with really cool options. Thumbnail here, this would be the thumbnail of the, of the overall slider settings and uh, you can just play around with which one you'd want to um, pop in there. Sli slide animation, all right. So this is not, again, this is not for every single layer inside the slide. This is for the overall slide, how the overall scene appears, fades in or fades out, how it transitions with the other slides. This is where you would make those changes, okay? So these are the basic options here. And I'll tell you what's cool about this is if you hover over each one, check that out, you guys. These guys gave you an example of what each transition looks like. I mean, this is pure genius. As you play through each one of those, you can see how every single effect moves, uh, slides in, slides out. I mean, just fantastically brilliant. Um, and of course, you can... Uh, use different ones here and um, let's say you know we can move that there you can take this and move it up to the top if you'd rather it be in a different order um, and of course you can affect each one if I choose fade here I can play around with how long it takes to fade in and out if I want a faster uh, transition time I can change that number and any of these have their own individual settings and of course this is all per slide right these are individual slide settings we also have uh, link and SEO options, which is pretty darn cool as well. So if you wanted to add a different class, this is getting nerdy now. This is going pretty darn nerdy in here for um, a, a special class uh, for your um, CSS or uh, a unique ID, again, for your CSS. You're more than welcome to put those options here. Custom fields, you can add as many attributes as you'd like, which is pretty spectacular as well. And if you wanted the entire slide, Maybe you're, you're not going to have just one little button. Maybe you want the whole slide that anywhere somebody scrolls over the slide, you want the entire slide to be clickable. That's an option here. You would just simply enable this, and then it gives you an option of what link to put in and what target even to put in. So really, really spectacular. This little setting here, link sensibility, do you want front or back? This is the Z index position of the link related to the layers. So do you want it on the very top of absolutely everything Then you would bring it to the front? I'm not really sure why the option would ever want to be toward the back, but hey, they again, these guys just kind of think of everything. It's pretty amazing. And then the last option across here for this particular one slide is uh, just some slide info. So you could put anything in here like a date that you added this. It's, this is just kind of a really nice area for some notes, description of a slider if you'd like to uh, throw some things in there, define a description here to show at the, navi uh, at the navigation if enabled in the slide settings. So really, really spectacular options. Um, you're not gonna break anything, you're not gonna mess anything up if you're in here just kind of tinkering, trying to come up with different ideas, get creative. I hope this inspires you to just kind of play around. I'm also, though, going to give you a link. In the description box below, I'm going to give you a link to Theme Punch's uh, individual slide settings documentation. This will walk you through everything I just shared with you. It's going to teach you what, what each one of these are and kind of help you give you a little bit more uh, visual as well as written explanation of what every single option is that we just walked through. So I hope that helps you. Subscribe to our channel because every single Wednesday I'm producing a video just like this and we're on a roll right now in this Revolution Slider series. So hang with me. Look forward to seeing y'all next WordPress Wednesday. Bye-bye.